We're going to be looking at word problems and how we solve them with percents using the two methods that we showed you the other day. One is through proportions and the other one is with equations. Let's just take a review. A ratio or a percent <clears throat> is a ratio that compares a number out of 100. We were setting them up in proportions as is is over of is equal to the percent over 100 or think of it as the part over the whole is equal to the percent over 100. The steps in solving word problems, we're going to circle the key words that we know. We need is and of that we already know and we know the percent. We're going to set up a proportion or an equation, either one that's going to be the easiest way to solve it. And then we're going to solve. We're going to make sure that we are answering the question that is being uh, asked. Attention students, round 25 has arrived, so you will be loading when you get outside. Round 25 will be loading. And we don't want to forget to use our units. I'm sorry about that, but I'm right after school and this is where we're loading buses. So we don't want to forget about the units that we're having to uh, put on there. All right, let's look at a couple of these. It says, Michelle has gone for a walk and she has walked six miles so far. This is 30% of the total distance. What is the total number of miles that she will walk? Well, we know that we're doing part over a whole, or the whole part is the total. We can set this up as a proportion. We know that six miles is what she's done so far. This is, this is my is, okay? And the total is going to be my x, because that's what I don't know, or the, the whole part. So it's going to be six over x is the same thing as equal to 30% or 30 over 100. And when I cross multiply, I'm going to get 30x is equal to 600. And I know that when I divide both sides by 30, because I'm trying to get x isolated, that 30 is going to go into 600 20 times. So I know that she has got 20 more miles that she needs to walk total. Okay, and it says the total number that she will walk is going to be 20 miles. So we could set this one up as a proportion. Here, Hector placed an order with the bakery for pastries. The bakery has completed 37.5%. So let's go ahead and set up our two proportions or our two ratios. 37%, 37.5% is going to be over 100, and I'm going to keep the 37.5 right where it is. And it says of the order, and it says he's completed 37.5% of the of the order after baking 20, 81 pastries. How many pastries did he order? I'm looking for the number of total pastries he ordered. So X is going to be my whole, and the part is 81 of them he's already made. So 81 over the whole is going to be 81 over X. I can cross multiply this, and I know that I've got 37. 0.5x is equal to 81 times 100 is going to be 8,100. When I divide 37.5 by either side, x will equal to a number of 216 pastries total. Okay? Boop. And that's going to be right here, pastries total. So you've got 216 total pastries that he's ordered. Let's look at our next problem. And we have the frozen yogurt stand in the mall sells 420 yogurt cups per day. That is their total amount. 45% of the cups that are sold to middle schoolers. How many yogurt cups are sold to middle schoolers? Let's try this one in the equation method. I know that 45% of the total number of cups they sell will equal to the number of cups that they sell to middle schoolers. So I'm going to say 0.45. Remember when we are doing equations, my percent has now got to turn into a decimal when I'm working with equations. So 45% of, of means to multiply, the 420 total cups that they make a day is going to give us how many cups that the middle schoolers. You're going to get your calculator out and multiply 0.45 times 420, and you should get x is equal to 190, 89 cups of yogurt that the middle schoolers will eat. So when I multiply this out, I know that 189 out of 420 cups are for the middle schoolers a day. The seventh grade class are going on a field trip as, a as, as of today. 
85% of the 280 students have turned in their permission slips. How many students have turned in their permission slips? We already tell us that 85% of the 280 students, which is the 280 is our total. So I can put this as a decimal of 0.85 of meaning multiply the 280 total students that there are will give me the number that have turned in their permission slips. When I put this in the calculator, I know that 200 and 238 students so far have turned in their permission slips for the field trip. So 238 out of the 280 total students that there are. I'm gonna let you try these next few up here. Um, this is for you to try. I want you to read them, work them, pause the video, work all of them out, and then come back and see how we, uh, I work these out. Compare your answers. If you got the right ones, you know you're on the right track and you know how to uh, set up your proportion, your proportions for your percent word problems. All right, let's look at the Smith family spent 28% of their monthly income on housing. If the family's monthly income is $3,200, how much do they spend on housing? I'm looking at 28% of their monthly income, which is $3,200. So I know that I can change this into a decimal and 20, 0.28 times 3,200 should give me how much they spend on housing. When I put this in my calculator, I know that they are spending $896 on housing. And I just push that, put that in my calculator. George saved 35% of the money he earned. Of the money he earned, if George earned $260, that is his total amount he earned, how much did he save? I can set this up into an equation as well, knowing that 35% is the same thing as 0.35, and the whole amount that he earned that, that month is $260. When I multiply those together, that is going to give me how much he saved. When I put this in the calculator, I know that he saved um, 90, let's see, he saved $91 for the month. So he saved $91 here. Okay, hope you're getting them right so far. Let's do the last two. Brenda earned $120 per, work, per week working at her part-time job. This is only 78% of what she earned. What is the full amount of her paycheck? Well, I'm lo let's look at part over whole and set it up as a proportion. I'm gonna have two proportions or two ratios that I'm gonna make equal to each other. I know 120 per week for the working week as of her part-time job. This is only 78%. Let's go ahead and do the easy part, put 78 over 100. It's what she earned. <clears throat> what is the full amount of Brenda's check? Well, I don't know the total, so that's gonna be the whole I don't know, but I know that this is the part or 120. So when I cross multiply, I know that I've got 78x is equal to 1,200, well it's going to be 12,000, um, it's going to be 12,000, um, 12,000. And <clears throat> I know that I need to divide out by 78 on both of these. And when I do that, I've got x is equal to, okay, and those are going to cancel out, x will be equal to $153.85. So she had a total earning of that week of $153.85. Let's look at Jerry took a test with a total of 50 questions. His teacher told him, Mr. Moss, please come to the office. Mr. Moss, please come to the office. Lots of interruptions. Sorry about that. Jerry took a test with a total of 50 questions. His teacher told him that he must answer 90% of the questions correctly to get an A. How many questions is this? Well, it says if he took a test and this total number I know is 50, that's the whole, what is the part that he's got to get correct if I know that he's got to earn a 90% on that test or 90 over 100? So I can cross multiply, and when I do, I get 100X is equal to 
4,500 or 4,500. And when I divide both sides by 100, I know that I'm going to get four, he's got to make a 45 questions. He's got to get 45 out of the 50 questions correct in order to make a 90. Okay, so he's got to get 45 of these questions correct in order to make a 90 on this test. Hopefully you got this. Hopefully you understand where I got these. And we're going to be doing more of these tomorrow in class.